Really? Yeah. So. And I know your age because you told me before the show. And I also found out something else here. Phil McCoy, Phil, are you listening? I am, sir. So I, I learned before the show started that, that, that Bill Stubblefield retired at the age of 58. Right? Yes. And Mr. Kearns, what age are you going to be when you decide to retire? 58. 58 years old. <laughs> now, now I'll, be, I'll be 61 at the end of this month, and I haven't quit yet. Why are you? You guys are quitters. I'm sitting here in a we're, room full of quitters, Phil. We're not quitters. We've been listening to Phil. <laughs> we, we, got, we got our retirement plan. I think you're quitters. Well, if you're stubborn, you don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you don't know the names that rhyme. Bill, Bill, <laughs> Phil, Rob. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> and he's Dylan, so we call him Dill. Yeah, the producer is Dylan today. I'm, I'm an outlier here. Yeah, uh, Phil, I, I think, uh, Phil, how old are you? I am 48. When are you going to retire? 40, in 10 years. I, I don't even <laughs> think about it. It doesn't even cross my mind. I'm blessed that I don't think about it. That's it. I, I don't mind getting up and going to work, so as long as that's – that's the case uh i have no intentions on retiring so only think about it see that's my point phil i mean uh, why would i why would i quit if i stop working all i'm going to do is sit in a chair and talk to people at home anyway so why, why not get paid to do it <laughs> well, that's a good point but you, you you do bring it up occasionally though you, you bring up retirement <laughs> and when can you retire and you're close to social security age so you, you're you're paying attention to those dates for a reason uh, occasionally does that mean maybe once hour once an hour uh, uh five days a week no, uh, phil is confusing my questions that i bring for the general good of the audience with my own personal interests as i as i once told a previous guest who is critical of my questions i said don't confuse what i ask for what my own personal interests and beliefs i think are. you had a jealous slant on that question anyway I think classifying I us as quitters well, yes we're well, retirees quitters. you're not retiring That's you're quitting <laughs> you quit i got a couple of quitters in the studio with me here phil well, in my case, uh, I you know when it's time to retire, but in my case, uh, uh, it was fairly obvious. I had been leading the organization that the President of the United States said we no longer need. Uh, we want to make your history. Well, that's probably and, a good And I uh, took him on, and uh, after about three and a half years or so, we won. The President of the United States backed down. Who was we that won. President, Bill? Uh, Clinton. Uh, I was not going to say Coolidge, but go no, ahead. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, in, but in the process, uh, bridges had been burned uh, and uh, relationships had not been broken but had been damaged. So it was, it was time for me to move on. Time so, to go. Yeah. All right. He tried to establish relationships. Bill, who did, <laughs> Bill Kearns, who, who did you offend? <laughs> I, I didn't offend anyone. I've had a, I've had a great uh, – tour of duty um so uh, uh yeah it's it's been great the pandemic took a little little hit to the career but uh, we made it through it safe and sound and with a lot of community partners and and um so yeah it's uh it's it's been great i've got a great bunch of staff that i have and so very nice when, when i do leave uh, it'll, it'll be left in good hands well good for you and that just makes you more available to co-host in the future there you yeah. go i want you to know you have to look at the chats sandy hamilton is on a roll today what's oh, she doing keep it going sandy she's saying nice things about me keep it going sandy yeah there you go <laughs> and talking and, and throwing stones at you rob so <laughs> life is good <laughs> life is a jewel i don't i don't know this sandy hamilton do you know Sandy? We know her very well. <laughs> I know she is. I know. She knows. Rob does. I, well, I think yeah. when I had poison ivy uh, a couple of summers ago, Sandy brought me mm -hmm. uh, some stuff to put on the poison ivy. So she's, she's a, a good person. She's got a good heart. And, has, and she she's makes, wrong defending you, Bill, but she's got a good heart. <laughs> <laughs> but Sandy has done as much for the community as, as most anybody I know. She has been very, very active in so many different fronts. Jackie Long said she retired at the age of 63. I think that's probably more what, what we're looking for here, Bill Kearns. Mm -hmm. That's because that's closer to your age. <laughs> <laughs> 58 just <laughs> seems like you're quitting. Yeah. Uh, Phil, let's let's uh, catch any NFL football. I'm not going to let Bill Kearns relive, relive that down. You catch some NFL football over the weekend there, Billy. I did. I caught like? a few games. I got to watch uh, Buffalo and Kansas City, which was a great game. Not the outcome. I, I really wanted Buffalo to win. I don't know why, but I did. I did, and, too. Uh, I, I didn't get to watch Detroit, who I'm now like a closet Detroit fan. Detroit and uh, – and Tampa play. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to watch that, but and then on the first day, I did. Uh, I did get to 
get most of the games in. So it was a good football weekend, even though my Steelers weren't playing. It was still a good football weekend. I watched. Uh, I've only, I only think only one time have I seen this. You know, the NFL films they do the. Uh, for the life of me, I'm blanking on what it's called, but they follow a team in the preseason through summer camp, and uh, they do the documentary on that. Hard knocks. Hard knocks. Thank you. And they do one in season too. Now they did the Dolphins this year, but I didn't really watch that. But the only hard knocks I've ever watched start to finish was the one with the Detroit Lions. And uh, Dan Campbell had, uh, I guess, taken over the year before. And they were just trying to get good after that. What were they, like 0-16-1 or 1-15-1 the one year? Yeah, they had a historically bad season. Yeah. yeah. And uh, every player that got cut that they were showing, they, they all said the same thing, which is, which is man, I, I know you're building something special here, and I'd really like to be a part of it. And I kind of became a closet fan of the Lions a little bit. Uh, not as my, you know, obviously not more than the Steelers, but – started kind of noticing them a bit more because you started, you know, you kind of know who the players are once you go through that documentary. So I've been watching their ascent and I feel good for them. I especially feel good for their fans who are, have just, you know, had nothing for <laughs> since 1957. Uh, they, they just have had terrible football really. And it's great to see how enthusiastic they are. But they had good publicity started with Alex Karish and the Paper Lion. And more folks became Lions fans that in those days you could never see them on TV, mm-hmm. but you were familiar with Alex Karish and the book Paper Lion. Yeah, so. and, but that really, the only time you ever paid attention to them was Thanksgiving Day. Otherwise, yeah, they yeah, were just a bad football yeah. team. So that and, of course, Anish Sampali, who uh, a lot of people in our listening community know, uh, former head of the Democratic Party in Berkeley County. He's a big Buffalo Bills fan. Just had a son, too, by the way. Sent me a little picture yesterday of his little son in a little yeah. Bills outfit yeah. watching the game. Very cute. <laughs> the Bills had been undefeated since his son was born. Uh, they had ripped off six in a row, but they lost yesterday on wide right. And I'm going to tell you the reason why, Phil. I don't know if you saw this guy on Twitter when the Bills beat the Steelers. He was defacing the terrible towel. Can't do that. <laughs> and what happens? The Bills lose on the worst two words in Buffalo sports history, wide right. You know what? Now that you you bring up the Bills game, and this is not why you have me on, but I want to talk about the worst rule in football is the fumble that goes out of the end zone, in the corner of the end zone, and is automatically the defense's ball. That is the worst rule in football now it, it turned out that because of that it made out for a good game because the game probably would have been over had kansas city scored but you know what play i'm talking about yes. like they're going for the pile on fumbles in, yeah. in in the field of play and it goes out of the corner of the end zone why is that the defense's ball why isn't why is that why isn't the last person that touched it or whatever i don't i don't that is the most confusing rule to me it is the worst other than maybe defensive holding is the worst rule in football i hate it the worst rule in football is any rule that protects the quarterback that's well, the worst rule in football or i was going to say any rule that works against my team <laughs> <laughs> that one too <laughs> the quarterback rules right now are so ridiculous for the defense that the game it becomes a farce when the quarterback has the football well and you notice how how much quarterbacks run now and there's reason for that and, you know, you can go back to the Josh Allen against Pittsburgh. It wouldn't have mattered. They just beat Pittsburgh. But on the one play where he slid and Miles Jack kind of rolled into him and it was a 15-yard penalty, well, the reason that happened on his long touchdown run, he fake slid. Mm-hmm. And everybody eased up. He did this little, like, I don't know how 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 you would do it, but kind of slow yeah, down. He, and he slowed down and he sidestepped. His, yes, and then everybody kind of slows down too because, oh, we can't touch him now. He's going to slide and then he runs for another 30 yards and a touchdown. But I agree with some of the quarterback rules. Once they leave that pocket, they should be like everybody else, everybody else, but they're still treated differently. So I agree with you. But that, man, if you, if Kansas City would have lost that game last night, and I don't want a Buffalo to win, but if Kansas City would have lost that game last night, that, that, rule, that rule needs to be looked at. It's terrible. That's a terrible, terrible rule. Well, and the, the, and the roughing the passer rules are equally as horrific right now. You're a defensive lineman. If he lands on the quarterback, yeah. that's roughing yeah. the passer. How are you supposed <laughs> you to land stop on your, him with weight? your weight? Well, what am I supposed to land on him with? What, a, <laughs> what is that? And then you got you got a guy like Josh Allen who's six six two fifty, and you you go in to yeah. sack him, and you're supposed to grab him from the side and try to spin him down. That guy's a beast. You you have yeah. you need you need to tackle him with force, but if you do, it's a penalty. What's the defense supposed to do? 
Yeah, I, yep, I get it. I'm, I'm with you. But that's not why you brought me on here. But man, when I saw when I saw that fumble, I was like, that's going to be Buffalo's ball. And my wife said, how in the world is that Buffalo's ball? I think like, it's a great question. But it's going to be Buffalo's ball if they if, if they determined that he fumbled it and. It, it was. Now, it didn't. It, it ended up not meaning anything other than making the game a little bit closer. But that that's a terrible, terrible rule. That, that would be an easy fix. So, anyway, there, there's my beef for the day. Right. No, no more beefs for me for the rest of the way. I've been complaining about snow. I've been complaining about wind. No more beefs. It's my mid-January resolution. No more complaining from Phil. Well, who, what are your picks for the conference championship games? I'm rooting for both road teams next year. Well, yeah, I kind of am too, but I think, and, and I don't want this to happen because of the conspiracy theory that the logo, they knew that who was going to be in the Super Bowl. Have you heard that? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That they'll, Yeah, that's so goofy, but uh, I think it's going to be San Francisco and Baltimore, so I think it's going to be. And, and if that's the case, uh, for one day, I'm going to be a massive San Francisco fan. Massive San Francisco. <laughs> why is that, Phil? <laughs> well, we know why. We can't have those rat birds winning another Super Bowl. The, uh, now, I would love to see. I would love to see Detroit go. I just, I, I just, I don't know. It, 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 with unless there's some injuries, I'm not aware of on San Francisco side. They're, they're really good. And I, his name escapes me. The really good dual threat kind of receiver that, that got hurt. Debo Samuel. Yeah, yes, that, that guy yeah. is an absolute. He, he, he's he's great. And if he's not there, it may give Detroit a little bit better of a chance. I also really wanted Green Bay to win uh, because I wanted to see Detroit have – could you imagine that place if Detroit had an NFC Championship game at home, which they would have if Green Bay would have won. But uh, Another that, missed I, field I, I was, goal. Yeah, another yeah. missed field goal. They're going kickers. Yeah, Dylan, Dylan, Dylan's a Ravens fan. He's wearing his Ravens jersey today. And I don't want to talk to Dylan. I He's have to say, the, the, the power of – Did you see the, the throwback Ravens jerseys? I saw that all over the internet last night. No. The Browns? <laughs> no, the Browns jersey. The, they, the, the power of Tom Brady is such that he is the only human being that's uh, inspired me to root for the Ravens. When, whenever whenever the Ravens would play the Patriots in the playoffs, Dylan, I would actually root for the Ravens, which would be how much I, I dislike the, the Patriots. the Ravens play. I will say that. I have an appreciation for the way they play in Harbaugh and organization, but at the end of the day, no. They're still they, the Ravens. Cannot, no, they're still the Ravens. They're, they're going to do it. This It has to be their year. The, the coordinators they, might be gone getting head coaching jobs. they got a bunch of free agents. They look great. I mean, Lamar, they're, they're hard to pick against. Lamar Jackson looks like the best player in the world. But as Ric Flair said many times, to be the man, you got to beat the man. And the Patrick man is Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. And the man exactly. is coming to town. Yeah. Yeah. And the man is coming to town. Yeah, I just, I don't know. There's, it's just the Ravens. And it's just in my blood that I can't like the Browns. So that's, you know, they, they kind of they kind of get that uh, that, that uh, uh tag i guess because i just uh, i can't i can't root for the ravens no. <laughs> i understand <Phil. laughs> Not i understand let's talk money because uh, we've been doing fairly well lately why uh, is it just that uh, the market sold off enough it was time to buy again or did something inspire this no there's and, and i think last week was really interesting we we have touched or, and, and I, I, i'm not sure if we eclipsed all-time highs but we're right there if we didn't uh, we're right there with the with the major indices, the S and P, uh, the most important of which, and and most of that. And I think it's I think it's very interesting because yield ten year ten year yields are still over four percent. So I would expect that if we were going to go above our, our all time highs, that those yields would be lower, but they're not. And we got a really good consumer confidence report, and it flies in the face of good is bad and bad is good. And what that tells us is that the, the markets have kind of come to grips with, I don't care if the Federal Reserve cuts rates in March or May or whatever it may be, as long as we know that they're cutting rates. And we still have a strong consumer. So if we can keep a strong consumer in a positive labor market, and in, in, in a healthy labor market, I should say, it, and inflation continues, and that's the big piece of this pie that or puzzle, that the inflation continues to fall even if it's slowly, if it continues to fall toward that 2% target that they've got and all these other measures stay positive. Because you know, let's look, let's think about it. You know, a healthy labor market and strong consumer confidence are both inflationary pressures, and we're battling inflation, and it's still coming down. So I do think that that's positive. So what that tells us from last week is 
our markets are now saying, hey, we're pretty sure that we're going to have a soft landing, and we're pretty sure that we're going to get down to that 2% target, and we're pretty sure that we're not going to uh, to go into a recession and the Federal Reserve is going to cut rates to, to help maintain this healthy level we have. Now, if that's the case, Rob, you're going to have to eat some crow with your own pal because you've been beating on him for quite some time. Nonsense, but Bill. Continue- <laughs> Bill. <laughs> but if this Reverend continues Arnold. on through 2024, you'd have to give the Federal Reserve a lot of credit for unwinding all of the, the COVID relief and the in the PPP and the enhanced and extended unemployment and all, cutting the rates and all that we did to keep our economy afloat during COVID, we're now unwinding that. Mm-hmm. And if we can unwind that without going into a recession, you have to give Jerome Powell a lot of credit. Now, it's still oh, Phil, you silly, quarter, silly man. We've got the lead. No. Yeah, we, we've got the lead, and it's in the fourth quarter. Uh, but as, And that's kind of what our markets are telling us last week. So hopefully we can continue this. Now, the only downside, I don't want to throw a wet blanket on our, on our happiness from last week, but the bonds have kind of slowed down a little bit. So that bond piece of our portfolios hadn't done as well as what we had hoped in December. December was a really good month for bonds. And when we talk about that, you want to see bond yields come down, not up. So when you look at those indices, if you see red on the bond yield, that's kind of what you want to see. That means your existing bonds are doing better. And we hadn't, we hadn't seen that so far in 2024, but the equity piece at the very least has recovered uh, to some extent. Now, it, it, it's not a wide range. It's mostly the mega tech stocks that have uh, boosted us and, and put us above those all-time levels, but the, the bond piece still needs to catch up. But the future is bright for bonds as well, for bond investors out there. The future is still bright because we know that the Federal Reserve is going to begin to cut rates. Now, how quickly uh, how steep they do it, we don't know that yet, but we know they're going to cut rates eventually. And when they do that, that will lift the bond market. Phil, I think that's a, you know, that's one of the great assets of having a good financial advisor. Is you all help us navigate those pitfalls and and what to look for and what not to. And and everyone was getting really scared, looking at their portfolios and 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 thinking, I need to. Re- take my money out and put it different places. No, it's like, no, hang on to that because it's going to recover. And looking at the end of the uh, fourth quarter, I know when I looked at ours, I'm like, yes, finally, I'm seeing some recovering here. Yeah. And and last, last year, the last quarter of last year was tremendous. It really was. And then we started giving it back in January. We started giving it back pretty quickly and just a couple of days brought it all back. So even when it was negative and we had, multiple weeks that were negative and i think the last week of december was negative too but we had multiple weeks of negative performance it wasn't that bad and if, if there was at one point in january we had a, a positive two percent that was huge and we were still negative on the year and then we just started giving it back little by little by little so there were some fears in there that hey maybe that maybe we're not in a in a re, re, rate reducing environment and, and maybe we will go into a recession at some point. And, and so we started giving some of it back. Now, the odds, and here's a, here's a strange thing. Like, you can look at odds, and we've been pointing to the, the Federal Reserve and when they make cut rates. You can look at the, I think it's on the CME website, but you can look at what are the chances of what the Federal Reserve does in, in, at, their next, at their next meeting. And it was at one point an 89 percent, this is in December, an 89 percent chance that they were going to cut rates in March. And that accounted for a lot of the good performance that we had seen in December. But now it's below 50 percent, barely below 50 percent, at 49 percent. And we've recovered what we had lost in January. And it's like, well, wow, that's good. That's kind of what's that say to me? That says to me that the markets are finally saying, you know what, we're worried too much about when opposed to uh, the fact that they're going to cut rates. I don't know that the when matters, you know, when it actually, the timing of it matters that much. Look, if you told anyone, hey, you're going to get a tremendous market performance at some point in 2024, you would want to be there. You wouldn't, you probably, most likely, you wouldn't try to predict when that was going to be. You would just be in it. And I think that's what investors are doing right now. 
Phil, for the last several months, I've thrown out a bait, and you have yet to nibble. Uh, much of our discussion of the market uh, centers around inflation slash recession, the balance between these two. But yet on the outside, we have a potential expanding war in the Middle East. Uh, we have the elections coming up and the uncertainty with elections. We have a border impasse that appears to be that's now become a political football. Uh, we have the, uh, the not anything been done in Congress. When do these multi uh, multiple things start playing a major role on the market and the market's response? When there's not a bigger headline for the market, and the bigger headline for the market right now is the Federal Reserve and those things that you had just brought up, the balance between uh, the, the Federal Reserve cutting rates and, and the odds of a recession. But that is the main headline, and it's sucking up all the all the attention as the markets are concerned. And we say this, you know, with each and every one of those International news is typically short-lived unless it's China. So all the, all the things internationally is short-lived. I'm not quite sure that we're up on to a point yet with the with the election where it will start to impact us. That would probably be August, September, October, if there's going to be any impact on it. And when we've seen time and time again where we we may brace for something for and look for uh, once the election happens. And there's a great example of that when Donald Trump was elected. In the overnight trading, I think overnight we were down 8 or 9% at one point in overnight trading, which is like, whoa, my goodness, this next day is going to be terrible. I'm waiting for the phones to ring off the hook. By the time the next day ended, we were slightly positive, and we, we kind of took a deep breath and said, you know what, this really doesn't matter all that much to the markets and companies' ability to make money and the uncertainty of which, and, and, and then from there we went on a pretty good run. But at the end of the day, the, the biggest headline will be the the market mover, and the biggest headlines right now for our market are is the economic reports and what the Federal Reserve is doing. So that's why it hasn't gotten that much attention is because there's something else. You know, we had the the government came to a short term agreement again. I mean, I, they they come up with these so much it's like a weekly meeting now. But there was a short term agreement on the, on the budget uh, last week at some point, and I don't even know that it made a headline. It's like, well, who cares? Let's look at uh, our, our, our CPI and, and PPI and all the alphabet soup. I, I, I like that name. I stole it from you, Bill, the alphabet soup of reports. And let's look at that, and let's, let's see what the Federal Reserve is going to do, and let's look at consumer confidence. And the earnings are, is, is starting to mean a little bit more. You know, in the third and fourth quarter of last year, earnings didn't mean a whole lot because we were so focused on the on the interest rates. But now that we've kind of put that in our pocket and said – I wouldn't say in our pocket, but – we, we've we've accepted that inflation, if it continues to go down, that we're not all that concerned about the timing from the Federal Reserve. We'll start to put more focus on earnings and Netflix and some of those big tech companies are coming out this week. So that, that, that will be important, especially for the NASDAQ and for those growth companies, those growth mutual funds. If you look in your, port, in your 401K and you see something that says large growth, there's a lot of those reports coming out this week. So that's really important for, for that sector of your, your portfolio. Bill, I hope the lesson we've all taken from this 25-minute uh, jaunt through a variety of topics is that Powell was wrong to extend <laughs> the pain he inflicted on millions of Americans and that you're finally coming around to my way of thinking on this. I appreciate I, that. I am not. I'm not. And I, yeah, I want a publicly I apology. If we get that down to 2% without going into a recession, I want a public, a public apology from Rob <laughs> to Jerome Powell. It's not going to happen, Phil. It's just not going to happen He is now. stubborn. Isn't he? Yeah, he is, and he's not retiring at 58. <laughs> I missed that boat. You missed that boat. <laughs> yeah. Or sorry, Bill Ship. Uh, <laughs> but I think I can hear the tone in your voice, Phil, the way you're setting it up with a lot of ifs and when, and but there's no actual, I, I think, confidence in your tone, which leads me to believe that you think deep down inside I am correct. I do not. <laughs> I'm going I'm I'm to take that as your ambivalence. I'm going I'm to take that as ambivalence there. Uh, Phil, how do people reach you for more information this uh, fine day? You can reach us at 304-263-4343 or stop by and see us with an appointment at 1270 Winchester Avenue right here in Martinsburg. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate you agreeing with me that Powell's wrong. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Have a great day. <laughs>